Watch this. Student loan borrowers are one step closer to some relief. For some, it could be a life-changing difference. For others, it may just be a drop in the bucket. And the Idahoans we talked to today, they have a lot of opinions. A unanimous decision by the Ada County Commissioners means 80 acres of unused riverfront property in Boise will soon look a lot different, but... The, the design is not over, it's just the beginning. And an incredible story of navigating chaos and war. Two men who are now living in Boise lived through a daring escape out of Afghanistan as the Taliban took control. Nationwide, we love to talk about the budget deficit. Here in Idaho, we love to talk about the budget surplus. On a personal level, Americans in general, they seem to hardly discuss their own finances at all. It's just part of our culture, different other places in the world. Perhaps in the United States, though, partly due to the amount of debt some people are in, they don't want to talk about it, specifically student loan debt. 43 million people owe more than $1.6 trillion, and it's gotten so out of hand, the federal government is officially rolling out the Student Debt Relief Plan, the application out today where qualifying borrowers can see up to $20,000 erased from their student loans. It's a massive financial break for some, while others say it's just unfair. Here's Andrew Bartline. Day one of the student debt relief plan. I'm excited about it if it all works out for me. Where Eric Guerra. It took about 30 seconds. Wasted no time applying for his share of the savings. After earning a law degree from the University of Idaho, Guerra finds himself in a hole. I'm around like 70 total, 70,000. Does feel like a lot kind of hanging over my head, but I, don't know, I think it's worth it. Just gonna have to pay it off. <laughs> but Guerra now expects to pay less. The Department of Education says anyone holding a federal student loan earning less than $125,000 a year will qualify for up to $10,000 in debt relief. Pell Grant recipients can receive up to 20000 Take a little weight off my shoulders in terms of owing that much money back to the government. For Guerra, this isn't life-changing. But any little help counts. But others are counting on big help, like Andre Womack. And I have 40000 in student loans. Womack expects he and his wife to each receive the maximum relief. It was a moment of uh, a joy in our home, for sure. My wife and I are both in the same boat. Uh, both with about the same amount of student loan debt. And so, you know, we're a household that would get about 40000 off, which is significant. It's half of our student loans. It provides the extra financial freedom today so Womack and his wife can thrive tomorrow. Well, for one, you know, our 400 a month monthly payment in student loans basically goes down in half. We just recently bought a home here in Boise. Now we can take some of that extra money and capital and put it back into renovating our home and in doing improvements or potentially finding other capital projects to put our money and equity into. But is that fair? Take Joe Filicetti, for example. So I took out loans in undergrad. He worked hard to push himself through law school, paying his own bills along the way. I took some loans for law school and I paid them off right away. It took one year. I got a second job to do that. At the bottom line, it's a contract. Somebody signs a contract to take a loan for school, thinking they're going to make more money at the end of it. Whether or not that's a good decision for them or not, they made that contract. They should stick to that contract. But the college students of today say you can't compare them to previous generations. I had parents that graduated college in the late 60s, early 70s, and they took out zero loans because they didn't have to. Yeah, my mom would always tell me the stories of how she worked a part-time job, left school with zero debt pretty much, was able to pay off an apartment and school. Their tuition was $1,700 for the year. My tuition was over $10,000 a year, I think it was closer to about $12,000 at Boise State. And there's no way with the cost of school that I would have been able to do that even while I was working full time. Remember Phil Assetti? He's Gara's boss. Well, I'm torn because I have a lot of friends that are younger that see this as great relief for them, and I understand that. Phil Assetti also understands they both went to law school at the University of Idaho, but Phil Assetti paid $300 a semester in 1987. Gara just paid $7,000 while on scholarship. Full tuition would have been 12 grand, making it hard to draw a line between what's fair and what isn't. I was willing to take on that debt, willing to pay it back completely if needed. And current borrowers aren't offering any complaints. Why would you pay more in taxes if you can take a break in taxes? I mean, it's the same, it's the same thing. I mean, so many people are willing to do so much to make sure they don't pay taxes. This is no different. This is just another, it's a tax break essentially for us. 
of the 43 million federal loan borrowers. The federal government expects 40 million to qualify for this one-time debt cancellation. And it's a very unique discussion, Joe, where Phyllis Setti says, you know, maybe going to college isn't the best option. If it's a bad loan, you shouldn't have taken out the loan. Maybe you go to trade school. There are other options people should take. So he's not upset at people who are getting this relief, but he is kind of upset that that contract is now getting violated. What's the point of a loan if we're not going to honor it? It's kind of his position, uh, but people are getting that break. It's a really interesting conversation you'll hear too between you know kids that are going to college you know, over the last five ten years and then you know people who went to college decades ago. I mean, just for example, Brian Holmes and I were exchanging notes about you know what cost for me to go to college, what it cost for him to go to college, and just when you look, you compare it to things like bread and milk, the staples, and you talk about inflation. It seems one thing is not like the other. So uh, it's curious what the conversation surrounding student debt will look like as you know people focus on the actual problem. Yeah, and if you calculate for inflation, you know three hundred dollars a semester, what Phyllis said he paid, I think it should be around like 800, 900 now to go to law school at University of Idaho if it just kept up with inflation. Well, it's far exceeded that. You saw he paid 7,000. Full tuition's 12,000. Conversation continues. Andrew Bartline reporting. Thank you so much, Andrew. Well, after years of sitting partially empty, some movement on what happens next with 80 acres of Le Bois Park in Boise. What could be happening there? Well, after months of meetings and proposals, Ada County Commissioners met this morning to announce which group they plan to use to rebuild the area. The top three firms were scored by not only the Ada County Commissioners, but by the Expo Idaho Citizens Advisory Committee. And it was close, but two top firms were separated by less than two points. But we have a winner. Here we are. Port, P-O-R-T, and their proposal would divide the area into two zones. One portion would focus on fitness and sports, including open space for recreation. The other would focus on bringing an ecological value to the land around the river. However, Ada County commissioners made it clear that those plans could very well change as time goes on. Just because this is the firm we're choosing does not mean that's the actual plan that will be implemented. That is is something that could be a lot more public input and a lot more uh, um, consideration. So what happens now? Well, the project will go into the programming phase, and that phase could take months to complete because of all the fine tuning and the public input. No word yet on the construction start date. Through the year 2021 here on the 208, we followed the developments of the United States leaving Afghanistan after 20 years of military operations. At the time, we spoke with United States military veterans about their feelings on the end of the war. Something we heard from military veterans was the incredible relationships they made working alongside members of the Afghan forces. Americans left many of their Afghan friends behind, wondering what their life and fate would be. Now, two members of the Afghan Air Force now call Boise a home of sorts. They escaped war and they eventually found their way to the Gem State. Earlier today, we had the chance to sit down with the gentlemen to hear their story. August 15th, 2021, the day that signaled significant change in Afghanistan. As the United States began to withdraw from the country, Taliban fighters entered the capital of Kabul. In the last day, I was leading a squadron in northern Afghanistan. So the Taliban came almost in the airport. So they started shooting and we feel that that's like time is up. Habib and Bashir were there on August 15th, serving alongside Americans in the Afghan Air Force. Habib specialized in helicopter work, Bashir a specialist in fixed wing aircraft. So I flew there until 2021, uh, making the intelligence, getting the videos, capturing the Taliban cartels and drug dealers, flying just shoulder to shoulder by Americans, by their squadron. August 15th, two weeks before American forces were set to leave the country, Taliban forces quickly took advantage of the situation. The Taliban came, they got the north of Afghanistan, then they just paved their way to the capital of Afghanistan. So we got the calls, we didn't know like it's gonna fall, the, all the government. So yeah, we didn't have time to even talk with our families. We were in the airport, just stand by. While Habib worked through crisis in the north, Bashir watched chaos in the capital. It was not like a big fight between Taliban and the government at that day. It was so calm and you just knew it's so just a dealing thing. And I think the president just left uh, Afghanistan on 15, I guess, too, yeah, yeah. on 11 a.m. So we were there till like 3, 4 p.m and then we left Afghanistan. There was lots of troops in Kabul, but there was no leadership. 
So when the president flee and the coalition forces, they were only in the airport side, and people were scared because the Taliban, they act like the last 20 years was very brutal. So they didn't care about children, women, or no one at all. People were scared that that day was like nightmare. All Afghans who worked with the United States people were trying to get out. You were seeing the women, children running on the runway. So we almost hit the people on the runway as we were taken off from the runway. Bashir was able to escape the capital in Habib, the northern part of Afghanistan. They both ended up heading to Uzbekistan. So we broke some international law because we went to their country all equipped with the fighter helicopters, with all of our gear, with weapons and everything we had, uh, like advanced uh, equipment like NVGs. We left nothing back home for the unit. So we took all the computers, like hard drive and stuff. So it was to make everyone else safe. So they were like, you planning to attack or you coming to your fleeing? How can you flee like this? So we, we were a hard time, like a month. Like a month, we were like just had nothing. Every day they were like questioning, is it? So they were very suspicious. So they were, they were actually. Yeah, because we had the United States planes with us, the guns and everything. The pair reunited in Uzbekistan, but say they didn't realize it would be the next part of the nightmare. After weeks and weeks of working with officials there and going through background analysis, the pair was able to finally get into the EU, and from there, eventually, the United States. I had some friends, they lived here in Boise. They had lots of good stories and things about the Boise. I said, okay, that's the place we need to be. I never heard of Boise or Idaho. I knew Washington, D.C., California, and Texas, and Chicago. Those. But yeah, we chose, we are five friends together. So we chose to stay in Boise, and maybe we can just make a way to fly again, and that's our hope right now because that's what we are good at. Both Bashir and Habib are working through complicated visa, refugee, and asylum processes. For now, they both work to help make ends meet for themselves and their families, who they were forced to leave behind. How often do you get to speak with them? We do regularly, and I'm engaged, I'm not married. So it's a little bit, I think, easier for me than yeah, I these guys. Two years old daughter, I, I talk with her like every day, morning and evening, for, for a couple hours. So. Yeah, and that's the hardest part to be far from your family. And of course, we support them with the works we do here. But we are not doing the work that we are supposed to do, I mean, what we are good at. And we're still making our way to that part to fly and to get our families back. The pair knows the daily dangers their families face, threats of the Taliban. Two weeks ago, the home we had, the home me, my dad and my elder brother tried to build it and everything, the Taliban took it. And they had, they gave, they gave the people three days to get and get your couch and your TVs and everything. We have the house. So it's hard, you're right when you get pushed out of your house, your homeland, and they get everything. And not just me, like lots of our friends all happened the same thing. They got their houses and you can live wherever you want, but we have the house. My, for my people, especially the women right now, they are fighting every day. They are on the street. They are asking for their rights, but no one can see that, unfortunately. Because they won't let media show. Yeah. Yeah, Taliban is actually against the education, especially with the women. It's like we just went back 20 or 40 years, so they're afraid of people getting smarter education, especially the women, to have the right, so they make explosion on the institutions, schools, especially on women and children, that, and they just want to keep the government for their so for maybe too long. That's why they are killing the people in the education side. The pair told me today that the reality of everyday life in Kabul, it can be very difficult and it remains very difficult for their families. Habib and Bashir hope to get their family stateside, but they know that doing that is an extreme challenge. The pair continues to work hard on their own journey to get green cards here so they can follow their passion and livelihood that they both love so much, flying aircrafts and helicopters. It is challenging because certification to do that in the United States, it doesn't quite count their thousands of hours of military flights in Afghanistan. It's a challenge both are ready to tackle, though, as they continue to work jobs to support themselves and their family back home.
They're considered the Alabama of esports, but even Alabama doesn't have the accolade to their name. We'll tell you about the Broncos' newest sport and the big celebration just five years into their tenure. Now's the time to tell us what you think about the show and what you want to see more of, less of, your call. Text us at the number on your screen, 208-321-5614. Make sure to include your name and hashtag the 208. We may share your message at the end of the show, but if we don't, don't worry. We may use it on another show, so always keep watching. In its nearly six years in existence, the Boise State eSports program has just accomplished an incredible feat, winning 1,000 matches, and that's the most for any Division I university, and quite frankly, it's not even close. Dr. Chris Haskell founded the program back in 2017, and at that time, he along with Dr. Brett Shelton have coached more than 1,400 matches, winning just over 1,000 of them. To put that in perspective, only two college basketball coaches has ever broken the 1,000 win mark. The winningest coach, Coach Mike Krzyzewski at Duke. He won just over 1,200 games in his 47 seasons at the helm. While the Alabama Crimson Tide football team all time, well, they've won 962 games since their inception back in 1902. So in their short history, Boise State has already won a number of prestigious championships, including the Mountain West title and the Eastern College Athletic Conference title.
somebody in editing is really excited for the fall colors. I'll just say that. Well, it's not uncommon for wildlife to make their way into more urban and suburban parts of the state of Idaho, especially as the weather starts to change like it's doing right now. Just yesterday, there was a report of a mountain lion near the Boise State campus then around the shoreline Americana Greenbelt area. A day later and no new sightings of them. And this morning, Another unusual sighting, this time over in American Falls. Check this out. The American Falls Police Department put out an urgent warning for people to stay indoors because of a moose on the loose. About an hour later, the department gave the all clear and posted a picture saying that their visitor is safe and sound, is taking a little nap while heading to higher grounds. And that's the moose. He's about 1,100 pounds, if you were wondering. And it's a good reminder here in Idaho, be extra cautious as the weather starts to change more animals will start to head to lower elevations for the winter to keep warm and to find more sources of food. So there you go. Lots of, uh, lots of action. And look at this. Okay, so some odd animal news from American Falls today as well. Aside from the giant moose, today was also moving day for two 40-year-old sturgeon from the Hagerman National Fish Hatchery and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service says that the two have outgrown their home. For reference, one of the fish is 7 foot 5, the other 6 foot 10, so they will be playing for the basketball team there. Now this morning they were taken to just below the American Falls Dam where they were released into the wild and depending on conditions, some sturgeon can live to be 100 years old, so they've got a long successful career ahead of them there in the river. Sounds like quite the midlife crisis, but great, great second uh, second act there for them. Uh, winter weather is in some places through the Midwest right now. Winter weather, yes, not just fall. Actually seeing some lake effect snow that's happening in parts of the Midwest because of that very cold trough that you're seeing there. All of those 40s for high temperatures today. That's where our lows were this morning here in the Treasure Valley and our high so far in Boise, 76 degrees. But now we're in for that pattern flip flop. We'd bit, we've been advertising this for several days now. It's it's sort of a, a get ready, do that final garden harvest as well for those sensitive vegetation plant uh, plants is what I'm trying to say. I'm not the gardener. That's Jim Duthie, but the tomatoes and the melons and the cucumbers and such, because here we are with fall finally falling into the region, not just our temperatures falling, but also some rain finally falling as well. We've waited all of October for that to happen. It's been about a month since we've seen measurable precipitation. That'll happen into Saturday morning with snow levels lowering as our temperatures do into Sunday. We're looking for high temperatures both Saturday and Sunday to be at least 20 degrees cooler than what we're experiencing right now. So this is a bit of a change, a bit of a shock to the system and snow levels early Sunday morning as temperatures drop will be anywhere between 35 to 4,500 feet and we could be in or should be in for the first widespread frost of the season here for the Treasure Valley. So enjoy the 70s while we have them a few more days through the end of the work week. Tomorrow's highs in the 70s all across the board even up through our mountain valleys as well. The warm fall conditions continue for a couple more days before those big changes fall into the forecast and it will really feel like it looks like it sticks around with those below average temperatures at least through the end of October and into the beginning of November.
All right, let's get to some of your comments here on comment board. 7,000, just got to, there we go. All right, uh, this person says, should have built a NASCAR track in place of the horse track. Would have brought a lot more money to the area. Ken and Kimberly, yeah, talking about the Expo Idaho area over there. I will say, probably a little bit too loud to have NASCAR those horses were a little bit quieter, but I like the idea. Uh, Melissa says the government has bailed out banks and airlines, to name a few, during bad times. Corporations receive tax breaks every year while making record profits and charging us more. College costs more than ever. I see nothing wrong with helping our young people. That's uh, Melissa. Thanks for sending that in. And this person says, love to see you, Joe. Love to see you, too. Uh, but where's Brian? Is he ever coming back? Oh, CH, do I got news for you? Brian Holmes will be back tomorrow. We'll see you at 5 o'clock.